Welcome into Five Wide Fantasy. Today, we're getting into our running back rankings for week 10 of the fantasy football season, helping you set your lineups this week. We should cover just about every matchup heading into week 10. Probably a big week for a lot of you guys sitting at, I know in one of my leagues, five and four and four and five are a lot of common finishes. Need to get into this stretch run. Need to make the right decisions with your lineup. We'll be going through these guys and some players you should sit as well at the position. If you guys enjoyed today's video, would really appreciate if you did hit that like button for me. And as well, if you are new, hit that subscribe button as well. We got fantasy football content coming every single day. Hopefully you checked out yesterday's video. We looked at the top five playoff schedules for fantasy running backs this season. Be sure to check out the rest of the channel if you haven't, if you have missed that video. Let's get into these running backs. Okay, first up is Christian McCaffrey, our RB1 of the week, like very much of the season, and getting the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are a very stout run defense. They're third in fantasy points allowed to running backs this season. They're 12th in EPA against the run. This is a tough matchup for the Niners. I am really excited for this game. I think the Jags are going to win this one at home, but uh, for McCaffrey, which definitely elevates his week, obviously he's scoring a touchdown in every single game, but also the Jags are giving up the most receptions to running backs this season. They're averaging opponent, opposing running backs are averaging over seven receptions per game. CMC is definitely one to catch a number of passes. So expect to see that at a high level this week at two is Brees Hall. Hall getting the Las Vegas Raiders, an excellent matchup for fantasy running backs this season. They are 29th in fantasy points allowed to the position. RB3 on the week is Austin Eckler. Not a great matchup. Detroit has been excellent against fantasy running backs this season. They're fifth in fantasy points allowed, ninth in EP against the run, eighth in PFF's run defense grade. And look, the Chargers have not run the ball effectively all season long. They're one of the worst rushing offenses in the league, dating back to last season as well. But we have a situation here with the Chargers where they are missing Josh Palmer. Eckler will continue to see a number of targets. Double the drops last week on Monday night. That was a huge problem, but uh, I would expect him to get back on pace here and see a number of of opportunities in this one with Palmer Williams, you know, Quentin Johnson not really proved himself in this offense. The lack of options here are definitely concerning and Eckler will be the focal point. Uh, Got to find ways to get him the football and allow him to be explosive. Four is Saquon Barkley. Barkley getting the Dallas defense, which definitely is one that is difficult to run on. Their 11th in fantasy points allowed, 8th in EPA against the run. We see how DeAndre Swift really struggle efficiency-wise last week for the Eagles. But the thing is with Barkley, you know, going to a Tommy DeVito, like you're, you're going to run the ball with him close he's going to get close to 30 touches in this game so even if they're trailing by a bunch you know even if they're getting blown out they're not going to be able to lean on their passing game um maybe they get to rod taylor back even if they do barkley's going to get great volume he's going to continue to be an elite asset despite this being an absolutely fucking terrible football team at five tony pollard it's been a real struggle this season with pollard um opportunities are there volume is there production is not the giants are going to give him a chance to put some production together. They're 27th in fantasy points allowed to running backs this season, uh, 22nd in PFF's run defense grade. So a great opportunity here for him. At six, Bijan Robinson. The Robinson fumble, taking away his opportunities, taking away his touches, but he's still super efficient with them and Tyler Algier is not. So getting him the football is still going to be a thing here in this matchup. Arizona, 30th in fantasy points allowed to running backs, 29th in run defense grade, 27th in EPA against the run. It's a brutal run defense team that the... Uh, Falcons should be able to move the ball super effectively against with their ground game. So both him and Algier are going to be solid starts for you, but higher on Bijan with his efficiency and his just pure talent. Seven, Jonathan Taylor. Taylor really took over with the vast, vast majority of volume last week against the Panthers. A great matchup, but he still like was not efficient whatsoever. He obviously had pitched in like five receptions, found the end zone with a reception that really saved the week. But man, when you get a matchup like this, I would expect better. But it's very clear that the the uh, Colts are going to be giving Jonathan Taylor the vast majority of the workload here in this offense. That's what happens when you pay this guy the type of money they did. You're going to be getting him the football. 18th in fantasy points allowed are the Patriots. They are a good run defense, though. Third in EPA against the run. They are a good run defense for sure, but they're a team that has struggled offensively uh, and have been in a lot of game scripts where they are trailing, so teams can run the football against them. Eight, Joe Mixon. Mixon getting the Houston Texans. Exciting matchup here. Stroud and Burrow going at it after a huge week for C.J. Stroud. Mixon's looked really good the last number of weeks, I have to say. 23rd and fantasy points allowed are the Texans. So a matchup here that is pretty solid for their run game um, and a game where the Bengals are, I believe, a seven, eight point favorite in this one. So could be in a good spot here to utilize Mixon quite a bit. The Texans are are not nearly as bad, though, against the run as they have been in previous seasons. So that's why I've got Mixon in the eighth spot as opposed to being higher. Alvin Kamara comes in at nine. Kamara found a little bit of efficiency last week against the Bears, something he's sorely been missing all season. Now getting Minnesota, who is a tough run defense, eighth in fantasy points allowed, seventh at EPA against the run. They stacked 
the box, blitz a ton, but Kamara will definitely produce in the receiving game, so can feel confident with him there. 10. Josh Jacobs. Jacobs getting the Jets defense. We saw that didn't give the Chargers a lot of problems on the ground. Their 20th in fantasy points allowed. Eckler found the end zone a couple of times, but they're 6th in EPA or run defense grade and 11th in EPA. So this isn't a good, uh, an easy matchup, I would say. What I can expect is we're going to see a team here that is going to give Josh Jacobs the ball a ton with Aiden O'Connell, the rookie at quarterback. He's going to be getting check down work. He's going to be getting serious volume. Efficiency isn't good enough, but man, the opportunity there for him has elevated him to being like on the season, he's like a top four fantasy back, which is kind of surprising when you look at you know what he's done with his opportunities. He should be Honestly, the RB1, RB2 with the opportunity he's received this se- this season. 11, Kenneth Walker. Brutal, brutal week last week against the Ravens. Expect to bounce back here against Washington's defense. 14th of fantasy points allowed. This is a middle-of-the-road defense, but Seattle, when they get in more neutral scripts, uh, they do want to run the football quite a bit, and this is a game they should be able to win as well, which will definitely help Walker's finish. And the rounding out our top 12 is Aaron Jones. Pittsburgh, an excellent matchup. We saw Jones finally getting that significant share lead back role for this offense, and that's very exciting to see moving forward. If this offense can get any sort of pulse and Pittsburgh should give them a pulse on the ground, 26th in fantasy points allowed, 23rd in EPA against the run. So excited about Jones this week after seeing some great volume last week and finding the end zone. Now to our RB2s, starting with Travis Etienne. I feel like I might be a little bit too low on him as I look at these rankings because he gets, again, much like our Kenneth Wall, or much like our Josh Jacobs, much like our Joe Mixon or Alvin Kamara, he gets plenty of opportunity. This is a tough matchup. San Francisco, I think, is a really good run defense, top 10 in fantasy points allowed to the position. Position this year. We'll see what ETN's able to do. Can he still generate some explosive plays? And will he be able to find the end zone in this one? That'll be the difference. If he doesn't, I see him more in this RB2 category right on the precipice here is where I, ha- I have a guy I'm excited about, Ramondre Stevenson. He was a guy we talked about as a by low, and he's been producing as of late. He gets the Colts defense. Great matchup. 28th in fantasy points allowed to the position. 20, what, 15th in run def- or in EPA against the run. 19th in run defense grade. So I like what we have here in Stevenson. Being a little bit more efficient than Zeke. Finding that explosive play last week. Getting a little bit more opportunity, which is very exciting for Stevenson. 15, Dave Montgomery. I expect Montgomery to be back for the Lions, and I don't expect Jameer Gibbs' performance to have an impact on Montgomery's usage, if I'm being completely honest. Like, this is something that Dan Campbell has proven to us. When Jamal Williams missed time, DeAndre Swift got opportunity. Even if he was good with his opportunity, they would go back to Williams. Montgomery has done nothing to make me feel like they're not going to give him his role back. The Chargers have really, really improved a ton against the run. They've been very good the last four or five weeks. On the season, 21st in EPA, 17th in fantasy points allowed. This is still a matchup where the Lions will be able to run the ball a little bit here. Uh, Even if the Chargers have improved, they're not one of those top units, and Montgomery should see some good volume and opportunity moving forward. 16, James Cook. So it'll be the last week we feel really good about James Cook, but Denver, last in every single metric I I pay attention to, run defense grade, uh, EPA, and fantasy points allowed. So Monday night, big favorites at home. Expect Cook to get some volume here after the Bills just... I mean, how do they expect to be a team that can win a Super Bowl if they just do not run the football whatsoever? Uh, Cook did not get any opportunities. He had, what, eight, nine touches last week. Expect that to change here against Denver in a plus matchup. 17. Have we talked about Derrick Henry at all? That's where I have him. Uh, Tampa Bay, just a really good run defense. Second in fantasy points allowed. Sixth in EPA against the run. This is a team that not a lot of opponents have been able to run on, and I don't expect that to change here with the Titans. I think they like what they've seen from Will Levis. Obviously, they have. They're going to be starting and moving forward over Ryan Tannehill, so they could lean on his arm a little bit more, where Henry will be uh, someone who hasn't been able to find those touchdowns this year at the volume we expect, and in this game could see a little bit less opportunity, so that's where I've got him. 18. Now, this could change. Again, keep uh, keep with us here throughout the week. Follow us on the Twitch. We'll be live on Sunday morning, uh, previewing these games, but Deontay Foreman is going to be my RB 18 on the week. I guess this game's on Thursday night. I don't even know why I said that. We'll see what happens with Khalil Herbert. He's logged back-to-back full practices, but it is a short week, so I I kind of think he might not play in this one. If he does, we're going to see this be a little bit more of a mixed bag with this offense because it is a great matchup for the ground game. Carolina's 31st in fantasy points allowed, 28th in EPA against the run. If we don't see Justin Fields, which I think there's a good chance we don't, he's been limited in practice, so he could play. We're going to have Tyson Bajan. That's going to lead to some more rushing, traditional rushing volume. So right now, that's where I have Foreman. If Herbert Herbert plays, I probably move Foreman back a little bit more in my rankings and probably bring Herbert into the top 30. Uh, but we'll see what happens moving forward here throughout the week. These are just practice estimates because they have not been practicing. I believe they will today, or I guess they did yesterday. It was an estimate on Monday. So we'll see what happens here with Herbert 
uh, and if he plays, but that'll definitely have an impact on my ranking. So stay tuned for that. And then at the RB19 spot, Javante Williams. Williams' opportunity and volume in this offense is really, really encouraging and nice to see after a really rough start. Uh, when I had him as like that buy low guy, the three, four weeks falling were not good, but the last couple of weeks have been great for him. But Buffalo, pretty solid matchup, 21st in fantasy points allowed to running backs. This will be the case of can the Broncos stay in this game? Because if they don't, um, we'll, we'll see guys like some Ajay P. Ryan, Jaleel McLaughlin on the field and some receiving opportunities there. So that'll have an impact on, on Williams' finish and why I don't have him as a you know top 12 guy despite his recent performance. 20, Brian Robinson getting the Seahawks. The Seahawks obviously gave up over 200 yards on the ground to the Ravens last week. I don't think it's completely indicative of what they are as a run defense. I still think this is a good unit. The fantasy points, 25th in fantasy points allowed to the position, 25th in EPA. So technically, this is a pretty solid matchup for Robinson. But again, I'm not as down on the Seahawks defense as these numbers indicate. I think this is just a case of a game that got away from them and now they've really fallen back. I do still think Robinson is a guy you do want to start in this one. 21, Najee Harris getting the Packers defense. Packers struggle against the run, 24th in EPA, 22nd in fantasy points allowed. So for Harris, a good matchup here, coming off a good game last week against the Titans as well. So you can kind of feel good about him in a good matchup, can feel good about him. 22, Rashad White. White getting that Tennessee run defense that I think is very, very good. Some of these numbers have them more middle of the road, 15th in fantasy points allowed, 14th in EPA. I think this is a good def run defense. White is a guy who hasn't run the ball efficiently, going to be really reliant here on his receiving opportunities uh, and can he produce there. The Titans actually aren't giving up a lot of receptions to running back. So a little bit lower on white, a lot lower on white than I was last week where last week I was really, really high on him. And he had a great week. 23, Chuba Hubbard. Hubbard's got the advantage over Miles Sanders opportunities. Did absolutely nothing with it last week. He was super inefficient where Sanders was far, far more efficient. So might have an impact, I think, heading into this week. Now look, Chicago has given up a lot of fantasy points to running backs, but they're second in EPA against the run. I think they're a solid run defense. Those additions they made in the offseason at the linebacker spot have definitely helped them. So that's something to pay attention to. I think Hubbard's a, a decent flex option, but he's not someone I'm super high on despite his edge in touches. And that could change considering uh, how he hasn't really been that good as he's kind of since he's taken over for Sanders. So we could see this get closer to a split. My last RB2 in the RB24 spot is Tyler Algier. I mentioned this matchup being so good. Algier getting the inside the five red zone opportunities, touchdown opportunities. So he's definitely still a solid start for you heading into this week. As again, he was the guy in the fourth quarter off that Bijan fumble to be getting more of the touches. So can definitely go off of that. All right, now some flex options, some guys that are inside my top 30, outside the top 24, starting with Jerome Ford. Baltimore, we saw their run defense put up some great numbers last week against the Seahawks. Kenneth Walker, Zach Charbonnet had nothing to show for themselves. Baltimore seventh in fantasy points on the season right now, fifth in EPA against the run. Ford is the guy between the 20s in the receiving game. You know, I think we're going to see Ford getting the vast majority of opportunities yet again here, but this isn't a very exciting matchup, so that does give me some pause in terms of wanting to play him. At 26, Jalen Ward, we talked about the great matchup here for the Steelers. Warren ran really, really well last week against the Titans, and I'm, we're, you know, we're seeing him get involved a little bit more uh, on the in the rushing game, and of course, he's the guy, number one guy they are use, utilizing in the receiving game too. So, feel pretty good about playing him here against the Packers off of what could still be some limited touches, but still enough, I think, to produce. Twenty-seven, Jameer Gibbs. I don't think Gibbs will go back to the guy he was in the first couple of weeks of the year, but I think the opportunities will be a fair bit limited. Um, I don't think he's going to see more than maybe like 10 touches in this game. Could do something with him because, again, talent is definitely there and the Chargers aren't a team to be too intimidated of playing him against. So someone you could play, but someone I'm not super high on. I don't see a lot of touches coming his way to be able to get him into the RB2 category. 28, Gus Edwards. We haven't talked about the Ravens' backs. Look, the Browns are a really good run defense. Fourth in fantasy points allowed. First in EPA against the run. This isn't a great matchup, um, but this, and this is a divisional matchup as well where we're definitely going to see this game, I think, be pretty low scoring. But Edwards, when this team gets into the red zone and gets into goal-to-go -go situations, he's their guy to get the ball to. So still someone you could start because he is a right now I see as a touchdown-dependent option. 29, Zach Moss. Pretty decent matchup here for the Colts. Moss is still going to be involved. They're going to be leaning on their ground game. Moss has been super, like one of the most efficient backs this season. So I'm still willing to play him even with that opportunity coming down. He's still going to be prove when he gets his opportunities. Could see 10 to 12 here uh, that he can be efficient enough to start. 30, Keaton Mitchell. Look, this was the guy I talked about in the waiver wire video on Monday that I believe is going to be a game changer for your fantasy teams. This is a really difficult matchup. I think he's an explosive player. Um, I got, uh, the most talented back in their backfields. I think he's still going to get his opportunities. A lot of people 
people telling me on our TikTok, telling me on our YouTube that, you know, this was just the case of a blowout. This was not the case of a blowout. Keaton Mitchell was on the field in the first half. He was getting touches in the first half. He was getting touches when this game was still competitive. And he was the far, far and away the best back for this team. So I think he's still going to get touches. Look, he's not going to get red zone opportunities. Justice Hill take away some receiving opportunities. He's going to be a guy between the 20s. But if he gets 8 to 10 carries, he can break a big play. He's capable of being a guy that's super, super efficient with limited opportunity. So not excited to play him, but I think you still could play him. He's about to be 30 on the week. Okay, we'll wrap things up quickly with some running backs that I would lean towards sitting that are outside my top 30 this week in fantasy football. Miles Sanders, someone that, again, touches aren't really there. This is a decent matchup. He's barely outside of my top 30. Alexander Madison is just a player I cannot be starting right now with his lack of efficiency, especially against the Saints defense. Don't want to be playing him there. Houston with Damian Pierce, Devin Singletary. Look, the split, the lack of efficiency. The Bengals are in a stout run defense, but honestly, the, playing either one of these guys is just... Not not worth your time, not worth your effort, and I'm not kicking myself if one of these guys finds the end zone um, off of, you know, nine carries for 22 yards. That's not going to kill you. Uh, Kareem Hunt, touchdown dependent option, really tough matchup. Don't want to be playing him here. Um, and again, uh, A.J. Dillon is someone now seeing his opportunity seed a little bit. We saw Aaron Jones get one of those uh, kind of goal-to-go carries, which is really encouraging for Jones, but a lot uh, a lot of reason to be discouraged for Dylan moving forward. But again, these are some of the guys that I have outside, barely outside of my rankings. Uh, if there's any players that I did miss that you do want to hear about, um, definitely drop those down below in the comments. Happy to answer them. Uh, and any other fantasy questions you have, a start set for your flex spots. Uh, get, get to the comments. I'll definitely answer those down below. Again, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel as well if you are new. And thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you on the next one.